When I walk down the street at night, there's a moment I feel afraid of all men. I think I look too good today. I should have worn my pants instead of this dress. I think I should have taken a taxi even though I'm only a few blocks from home. I think if anything happens, I'll have only myself to blame. People will ask me, why was I out so late? People will ask me, why did I put myself in a dangerous situation? Why was I alone? I can go on and on about this. This is what I do, I analyze. And my analysis is, this is about men snatching power away from women. This is about men all over the world using a woman's body to show their strength, their might, their power. I have a PhD in psychology, not history. Well, well I did minor in cultural anthropology in undergrad. But let's look at the ramifications of war, of unrest, of any argument anywhere in the world. The woman's body gets defiled, mutilated, her body serves as a lesson. I keep saying anywhere in the world specifically. You look at Africa, Australia, America, it's happening today. These men in India, that's all we hear about and read about right now, they want to prove something. They want to prove that even though women are getting educated, gaining jobs, rising up in social status, that men still hold the ultimate control. Surely you understand this is not just a caste situation. Well, yes, caste is absolutely and definitively tied to the problem as, for example, we cannot talk about black women getting raped in the 1860s in the US without talking about slavery. What I'm saying is this is a problem so massive, so entrenched in our very being and everything we have learned, even the phrases we use, rule of thumb, because English common law permitted men to beat their wives with a ruler no thicker than his thumb. Well, once I found that out, I vowed never to use that phrase again. But this isn't just cultural, it's political, it's sociological. Like I said, it's massive. A human being should know raping a woman is wrong, am I right? This is just within the realms of empathy. They wouldn't like to be raped themselves. That the laws are changing so that they will be imprisoned if found guilty, but it's still happening. And at an alarming rate. And women are being burned and hung after being raped and killed. I treat some rape victims. I don't speak much during my sessions. I like to listen more, but I'm angry inside. There's no sex education. It, it's, girls are told how to prevent rape, but boys are never told not to rape. Politicians make statements condoning violence against women. We're always making excuses for the males, justifying their actions. How is violence ever justifiable? Oh geez, there are so many more reasons, indications of how we have gone so terribly wrong as a civilization. Well, that is why I'm not a policymaker. <laughs> it's just too massive for me. Listen, I saved up a lot of money for this place right here. I lived at home for 10 years after college so that I could put every single cent I made as a finance assistant to be my own boss. It's not easy, this business. You know yourself how many places close down. People are finicky. They'll go to their favorite bar to watch the game instead of coming here. So I had to do something to establish myself. I took a course in marketing, you know. You know what I learned? There is no box. You know how people say, think outside the box? Well, I learned there is no box. That, that was so amazing to me. I, like, there are no rules. So, you know, I got a couple TVs in my joint and I heard about all the stuff that was going on. And I saw these women protesting, you know. These women in these bright colored outfits, what do you call them, uh, saris or something? I wish I could wear bright pink and orange like that. And I saw a woman that, I saw a sign that a woman was holding up and it made me laugh. There were a couple guys in here that day. They, they were watching too and they started asking me, why are you laughing? This is serious. And I said, cause they're holding up a sign that says rape me. <laughs> or who would ever want to be raped? It's funny when you say it out loud. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I know they're trying to be ironic or whatever. And that's why I made the news. Because I named the drink here. Rape. <laughs> alcoholic and non-alcoholic versions. People said my place should be shut down. That I was setting back the movement. Listen, I just run a bar. I don't even care if nobody orders it. At least people are saying I'm not going to ask for a rape. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
I am a student at the University of Delhi. I marched with my girlfriends. I made a hundred signs. People ask me, have you been raped? Why is this so important to you? And I say, no, I have not been raped personally, thank God. But actually, I should say, yes, yes, I have been raped. I have been raped of my moral center, of my dignity. When my sisters in my city, in my country, in the world get raped, I feel as though I have been also. It could be me tonight. It could be you. We are tired of living in fear. We demand change. Thank you.